Now let me ask you this, if Christ was a white man, what makes you think he's gonna save our black asses out here from all this crime and, and drugs and things of that nature? Why would Christ, a white man, save us? When we, can, when we can see the white man on earth is the one that put us in this position. Right. The, the white man put us in this position where he's redlining, he, he, he shoots us down, gives us the, the worst water, the worst food, does all these horrible things to us, keeps us oppressing these ghettos, but the same white man that's doing this thing to us, I expect someone that looks just like him to crack that sky and save us. Bring it out. It doesn't make sense right. at all. Read it. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So Adam, the first man, was Lord of everything. Go ahead. Of him come we all. Now here they say, of him come we all. All people, like I just stated. And the people also. I said, of him call we, come we all. But then it says, and, meaning there's a separation. Read that again. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. And the people that he has chosen. So it says, he created all the nations. And then it says, and the people he chose. Remember, we said Israel was chosen. That's God's chosen people. So it's a separation. Keep going. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou madest the world for our sake. He said he made the world for our sakes, the Israelites. All right. All right. This whole world was made for you to rule. Go ahead. As for the other people. As for the other people. Because remember the separation. The world was made for the Israelites. But for the other people. Which also come of Adam. Go ahead. Thou hast said. That uh, God has said. That they are nothing. That all the other nations are what? They are nothing. Go ahead. But. Be like unto spittle. Be like unto what? Be like unto spittle. Brother, do you know what spittle is? Somebody type in spittle. I'm just, real quick. <coughs> type in spittle. Show the brother real quick. All right? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the time. This is what spittle is. Ready? Check this out. Spittle is spit. God says what? Be like unto spittle. All right. And has likened the abundance of them. Has likened all of them. Unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He said all the other nations are the equivalent of a drop that falls from a vessel. Like for example, brother, if you have a big, a big bucket of water and you're walking and a little drop falls out, are you going to lose your mind over that drop that fell out? That's how God feels about the other nations. Right. He doesn't care about them. Right. That's in the Bible. Read that again. The last part. But be like unto spittle, All right. and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Yeah. And now, O oh Lord, behold these heathen. All right, that's it. Now give me revelations. All right, so we're showing you that God is only dealing with the nation of Israel. He chose us to be above everybody. <laughs> All right? Now, we're going to deal with something that you said. We was both taught that Christ was a white man, according to the Bible. Right. All right? Now, have you ever read that in the Bible that it says... Jesus Christ looked like a white man or he was pale or whatever. Me neither, right? So we're going to see the description of Christ. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, now Jesus Christ, it says his head and his hairs were white like wool. So the hair on top of his head and his beards were white and woolly, all right? I'm asking you a question, my brother. What nation of people are known to have woolly textured hair? So who? Like, you know, you ever seen a sheep? You see the texture of a sheep's wool? Indian. What kind of Indian people that's different? Like, because you got the Native Americans, you got the East Indians. That's woolly? You seen a sheep? All right, take, take that do-rag off real quick. I'm going to show you what, what wool hair. That's it right there. there you go. That's woolly hair. Right. Right. All these brothers out here have woolly hair. Right. Right. Like a sheep. There's no such thing as doggy stringy hair. All right? God doesn't have doggy stringy hair. He has sheep like, like this brother's hair right here too. All right? That's woolly hair. Keep right. going. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. And his feet. All right. We're looking at his feet right now. He's looking at Christ's feet. Like unto fine brass. All uh, right. His, his feet were like fine brass. Now, what color is brass? Gold? What color is brass? Brass. Yes, sir. Brass. What color? Yeah. You said gold? All right. Brass is like, it's close. A brownish color. 
You ever seen like a penny or something like that? That's the color of brass. Read that part again. And his feet like unto fine brass. What? As if they burned in a furnace. Now this, you take this brass that's already brown and you burn it in the furnace. And what color is it going to be? If you burn anything, my brother, what color is it going to be? <laughs> very, very dark. Exactly. Right. So we're looking at Christ and we're seeing that he's a dark-skinned man according to the Bible. That's right. This right. thing is a pale face with Jesus Christ. Right. That's a right. lie. All right? You see all the angels, it talks about the angels are white and they're real homophobic and effeminate touching each other in the sky, that little picture, you know what I'm talking about. Hey. That's not in the Bible. The exactly, that's not in the Bible. All right? Is that it? Keep going. Wake him up. And his voice has the sound of many waters. Ah, that's the part I really wanted. So Christ, not only was he a black man, but he was a loud black man. Right. He wasn't no soft, effeminate black man at all. He didn't talk like, oh, oh, art thou. Oh, everybody, I love it. That's not in the Bible. Right. God was allowed. He said he was an austere man. That means he didn't play around. He didn't joke around. He was about teaching these laws, which is why we're out here. Right. We're out to teach our people. For everyone that doesn't know, we're out to teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who you are according to the Bible. Come back to the laws of God because that's the only thing that's going to take us out of this captivity. Right. All right? That's right. Let me ask y'all this. Step up real quick, bro. Let me check this. Check this out. Y'all see this right here? Y'all remember these pictures? What's going on in this picture right here? Slavery. Slavery, right? That happened to our people. That's actual document, actually documented, right? Now, what if I was to tell you that was documented in the Bible as well, way before it even happened? That same slavery in the minutes before that, right? Get that for me. Deuteronomy 28 and start at verse um, 32. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Bring it out! Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And do we got another chord? Sing short. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says the Israelites, their sons and their daughters, the same people Moses was talking to in the wilderness, your sons and daughters in the future time will be given unto another people. Again, separation. You will be given unto another people. Right. All right, keep going. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So when you have your kids taken away from you in many multiple ways today, like for example, uh, child protective services can come and take your children if they hear a report that you're abusing them or doing something. They can come in and take your kids. You can't do nothing about it, right? Or another way your child can be taken away from you is if you have baby mama drama. Right. Drama. You as a father don't have rights to your child anymore. Right. That's another way. Keep going. <clears throat> and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. It says your eyes will look and fail with them for, a long, for longing all the day long. Because on the plantations, when it was time to sell the, sell the slaves, they can take your children or your mother, your sister, and sell them anywhere they want, right? And did you have any say-so? Could you say, no, nah, master, that's my mom. Can I keep her? Oh, yeah, you a good slave. Come on. I'm going to keep your mother. It didn't work like that. It's all for their benefit. Right. Read that part again. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. My brother, we're talking about slavery that happened, right? All right, good. So this is the very important thing is we have to understand this Bible is only for us. These curses only fit our people. Give verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. All right, check this out, bro. Pay attention. Pay attention. Check this out. Because remember, this is the Israelites in, in the wilderness after we came out from the hands of Pharaoh. Moses is talking to us. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He said if we break the laws of God, he said the Lord is going to take us into Egypt again. Because remember, we just walked out of Egypt. Now we're going to give you the definition of Egypt. All right. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Just like we just talked about. So what is Egypt? Out of the house of bondage. Because when we was in Egypt, we served slavery, bondage. All right, we was at the bottom of society, just like we are now, building up Egypt. That's what we did. Okay, now go back. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. But this time, once we go into slavery again, how's it going to be? With ships. We're going to go into slavery on way of cargo slave ships. All right? Who did that happen to? What slaves? Hold on, say that again. Read that part again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, this time we go into slavery, we're going to go to slavery on ships. We're going to be slaves on ships. And then what's going to happen once we get off those ships? 
by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Go ahead. Here you go. And there, once we get off those ships, there ye shall be sold. Once we get off the ships, we're going to be sold unto your enemy. To your who? Unto your enemy. Go ahead. For bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. It says we're going to be sold for bondmen, which is slave men and slave women. Who did that happen to, bro? Think about the history. We just talked about it. We just looked at this picture. Did your people come over here from Africa on ships, chained up? Look at this picture real quick. Look at how they have our people, like sardines in the can. Look at all these men. Look real closely. Look at how they have us stacked up like this, right? Chained up. And it wasn't like you could say, hey, Mass, I need a bathroom break. Oh, I got to stretch my legs. There was none of that. Right. Once you get cramped up, you know what you did? Your ass just laid there. Right. Right. Until it's time for you to get up. When they want you to get up and move around, that's when you move around. Wake when up. you had to use the bathroom, he said, hey, master, can I, can I use the bathroom? Come over here real quick, bro. Come here. Come here. He says, um, hey, bro, I got I to gotta use the bathroom. Master, can, can I get to use the bathroom? They going to look at you like, shut your nigga ass up. That's what they're going to do to you because you had to pee on yourself on this boat. You had to defecate on yourself while you were chained up beside somebody. Right. And when women had their menstruations, what, what, what do you think happened? They had it right there beside other women on top of each other, like sardines. And think about all the smells you had to smell down there. People were throwing up, dying because of these diseases that were being spread down there. Jeez. And it was no care for us. Right. That's why read that part again, it says you should be sold to your who? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Your enemy did that to you. Those were not your friends that did that to you. Right. For you to be on a boat, chained up beside somebody, defecating, pissing, throwing up, Jeez. menstruating beside somebody, only your enemies could do that to you. Right. Huh? Hey, ask him. Real quick. Ask him. Ask him how you join. Ask him how you join. Where are you for our people? Where are you for our people, okay? Hey, my brother. I just, I, just finished, I just finished talking about the same topic about sleep and how they think, you know, we were the only ones that was just like, you know, I think about what's the joint of truth being, how strong she was, how strong the woman she was. Right, right. She wasn't the only one that was more than a that's a fact. That's a fact. And the ignorance is talking about not keeping laws of God. Like simple things. I'm going to show you one. Leviticus 1911. I'm going to show you a couple. And, this, and you let me know if this can help clean up our communities. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 11. Bring it out. Ye shall not steal. Ye shall not steal. Now, don't you think in our communities, in the black and Hispanic community, if we could not steal from each other, that would help reduce crime, right? That's one way. If we would not steal from each other, if you're a hardworking man, you work hard to provide for your family, right? And I'm lazy, right? If I steal from you, I'm gonna get by for a little bit, but I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay broke. It's gonna break up, it's gonna break you up though, because you now have to go find another way to provide for your family. And then you get more like hatred to me or something like that. These are things that destroy our communities, right? Of course, of course. I'm glad you won't. The whole point is not avenging that, not going to steal back. But for me, if I'm stealing, it's a problem in the community, right? That could evoke a spirit of somebody to come harm me because I stole, right? I read the next part. Neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Another one. Hey, sis. Hey, sis, how you doing, sis? My name's Johanna. What's, what's your name? Aaliyah. All right, uh, what are you talking to the brother about? He's asking me which one we are. Uh, what's your father? What's, it's, it's okay. So we're out here for, for edification. We're your brothers, all right? What would, what would your father be, his race, if you would, uh, if you know it? Oh, he passed away. I don't know. He passed away? You don't know? Okay, okay. Uh, So your mom is in Israel, like good, all praise. All right, so let me tell you, what we let me tell you why we're out here. We're out here to teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, according to the Bible, that they are the children of Israel. Right, that's God right. God's chosen people, and they have to stop committing crimes, come back to the laws of God so we can clean up our communities. Right. Check this out, sis. Watch this, watch this, look at this. See that lady over there? Over there in the corner? Bugged out her mind? And you see everybody over there just walking past like it's normal. Is that a normal thing? It shouldn't be, correct? But we only find that in whose community? 
our communities. You you familiar with the Richmond area? You ever heard about Rivers Bend or uh, Stony Point? Shock, I mean, uh, what is it, uh, Short Pump? Do you think they have strung out people in the corners over there? They wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't allow it. Damn. Damn. I'm, I'm glad that you understand that. They wouldn't allow it, but why is it allowed in the so-called black and Hispanic native neighborhoods? Why is that the norm? Why is it that we can have strung out people walking around and people going to the store, walking past like they don't give a damn? Right. Walking past like they don't care, like it don't affect them. Don't you know things like this drive the property value down of your housing around here? That's why it's hard. You can't really sell your house. It's horrible because nobody wants to live amongst things like that. Right. All right? Now let's get to this. I'm going to show you something, sis. You go to church? You don't? No problem. Wow. Good. I'm going to tell you it's a good thing because Christianity... I'm going to do a thing right now. I'm in a more of a religious spiritual, more of a spiritual phase right now. Like the universe and stuff? Try this out. Try this out. Before you get to that, try learning the Bible the correct way. Yeah, Medusa, the white woman with snakes. She wasn't. She's a black woman with locks. And they, and right, the, they, that's what they say. They, they say they say a black woman looks dreadful with her hair like yeah, that, right? Who told them that? Who said that? Who made that up? Oh, what? So we see they don't like us, right? You understand that, right? Now, before you go to that, try the Bible again because the Bible was taught by our oppressor. That's what we learned the Bible from. And to say that we will learn. Given and taken out as well. Now, says now when you say things like that, I'm going to ask you this: What was taken out? How would we know if it's taken out? If we knew about it, then it wouldn't be taken out. Right, right, okay. Okay, so people say things were added and taken out. That's cool, but let's prove it to the Bible. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right. Now, give me give me Deuteronomy 76 real quick. I'm going to show you something. Because in church, we were taught that God is dealing with everybody, and we're on the same level. We have to break these things down. What color is Jesus Christ? Um, bronze. Uh, and what color is bronze? What color is it? Brown, right? Like a brownish color, right? We all are Egyptian? No, you know what you like, mean like you mean Mediterranean, Middle Eastern? Color, like yes, color. Alright, let's get let's get that real quick. Let's go to it. Let's get the color of Christ. Alright? We're not gonna be around the bush because your oppressor tells you Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, olive color. These these are weird things, but let's see what the Bible says. This is the book of Revelation, chapter se chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So we don't have to wonder no more. The Bible has it covered. Because if we want to find anything else, if we find anything about God, we had to look in the Bible. Go ahead. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, so his hairs were white and woolly, okay? What nation of people have woolly hair? Woolly textured hair. Who is that? Willie, you ever seen a sheep? Yeah. What texture is that? <laughs> Strong. No, it is. All right, who has that hair? Look at you. I don't. Hey, get off. Hey, bring it over here, folks. Over here. What texture of hair do you have on your head? Yeah. What does this brother have? Uh, yes. Wool. Yes. That's wool. Every, nations don't have that. That's why you're different. Your hair is made to be stronger and better than everybody else's. Right. right. That's how God is. Finish it up as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, right. and his feet. And his what? And his feet. Sis, I can see your feet, right? I didn't know he said that. Go ahead. Dog. Let's go. There you go. And his feet like unto fine brass. And we said brass is brown. It's a brownish color. Let's go. As if they burned in a furnace. So you take that and you burn it. It's going to become very, very dark. I never heard that. Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man. That's a black right? man according to the Bible. So we don't have to guess anymore because the Bible says it. But Jesus Christ was a black man with woolly texture and just like all my brothers over here, we all have that wool, all right? That's why we're special and that's why we're above everybody else. Right. There's no such thing as equality. Right. And that's why your oppressor hates you. Give me Proverbs 31. Okay. Proverbs 31, all right? And he's just because he doesn't have the same hair that God has. Christ has the woolly hair and so does his father. His father has woolly hair just like him. Proverbs 31. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 3. And this is what we had to teach our people. When you hear these things, 
teach your youngest. If you have children, you teach your children. Brothers and sisters, you teach them these things. I'm sorry, 331. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have to teach these things that you're learning from the Bible the correct way because you will never find that in the Christian church. They're not going to tell you that Jesus Christ is a black man. They're not going to tell you that he's an austere man. They're going to tell you he's a soft man. Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Envy thou, envy thou not the oppressor. It says, envy not the oppressor. Now, we have to ask ourselves these questions. Who is the oppressor he's talking about? So there is an oppressor. The oppressor is talking about the, the same people that's oppressing the so-called blacks and Hispanics today. Right. Every other nation oppresses you. Right. All right? They oppress you. They teach you that Jesus Christ, the, the, the hair they have is stringy, blonde hair, blue eyes. They say that's beautiful. And so what they, what they say about your hair? What are the myths they say about black people? What do they say about your hair? It's a what? It's a nappy. It's a nappy. It's, it's uncontrollable. Uh, it's ugly. That's what they said. You remember you said with dread that they said the dread is like dreadful, right? That's what they said about you. That's what your oppressor said. He made to make you feel feel bad about yourself, to hate yourself. And when you hate yourself, you gonna hate your people automatically. Right. And you know you cannot not gonna get that same same uh, the same patience with a white man that you gonna get to your brother. Less patience. All right. Good day. You said what? It's a cycle, Zach, my brother right here. What we're teaching is history according to the Bible. We're teaching about coming to our community, the so-called blacks in the Spanish, and cleaning up our communities. Like, for example, I point over there. There was a sister over there strung out of her mind because she was on drugs. My question is, why is that normal in our communities? All right, read that. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Now, this was prophesied. It said we're not going to have a king for a while because we're going to go into slavery. Go ahead. And without a prince, and without a sacrifice, All right. and without an image. Without a what? Without an image. So we've had an image before in the past, but due to us breaking the commandments of God, we lost that image. Right. That image is who we know now as being Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's right. We didn't know that Jesus Christ was black. I was in church for 26 years, all right? A lot of our people did not know that. But now that the Lord has this, uh, has put upon us the spirit of coming back to our nationality, now that we know that Jesus Christ, the best man ever walked this earth, looked just like you and me, all right? He's not, he doesn't look like this. I know stringy hair, blue eyes and stuff like that. He wasn't soft. So now that we know who we are, we can do better now, right? All right. Now get, get back to, go ahead. Verse 5. Afterward, shall the children of Israel, afterwards, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. And that's what we're doing right now. We're seeking the Lord. How do we seek the Lord? Through his word. Right. All right. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.